Hello and howdy there, folks. Uh, here to talk about the new film from the Coen brothers, Inside Lewin Davis. Uh, absolutely loved it. Um, I think I have no problems giving it a 10. Um, there's a little bit of extenuating circumstances there, but I have no problem giving this first initial viewing a 10. I could see where in the future um, I would give it a 9 just because the impact of watching it the first time is, you know, perhaps I, it's the type of film, it's the type of experience that you'll always wish it was the first time. You know, you'll always say, man, I wish I could go, I could go back and watch it again for the first time. Um, so maybe since the next time I'll see it, I'll be looking for clues, uh, you know, something to piece this puzzle together. Um, and I won't be as in the moment. Uh, the ending won't be as, well, it probably will be rewarding, but it will be different. And it will just be a different experience the second time I watch it. So, but this first time, the theatrical experience, uh, I give it a solid 10. And I definitely want to see it again. Uh, I usually wait to see a movie twice before I record a review. Um, I can't do that this time because I'm about to go on vacation. Um, I definitely plan on seeing this movie again. I probably won't be able to see it until I'm back here in Los Angeles. So I wanted to get it watched and I wanted to get it reviewed um, you know, before I leave. Uh, the film is tremendous. It's uh, one of the best films of the year. Um, it, uh, I loved it. Uh, another point I want to make before I get going, uh, I, I'm going to try not to talk too long as, as I started thinking about this film, as I've thought about the film uh, ever since I saw it a few days ago. I haven't stopped thinking about the film, really. Um, I'm not going to give away too much at all. And here's, here's what I want to say. Avoid all spoilers about this film. Avoid all conversations about this film until you see it. Know that it is a must-see. You know, know that you must see it. Uh, and do it right away because you don't want to hear anything about the movie. You can't have... It'd be kind of like going to see The Sixth Sense knowing the ending of The Sixth Sense. And I'm comparing the endings of those movies. That's about it. The ending of this film is just as, you know, I can't say shocking, but, uh, you know, a revelation. You know, it just immediately turns the entire film on its ear. Uh, it, it just makes you... I don't know, I was kind of awestruck. You know, I was awestruck. I, I didn't know what to think. Um, I, I was, you know, literally scratching my head a day after uh, thinking about the ending of this film. Um, I just don't think you... Because that's what people are going to talk about. And that's why I'm saying to avoid all conversations about the film and just to go see it. Because there's one main element to talk about. It's it, Okay, so... I'm going to talk about The Sixth Sense. You know, at the end of Sixth Sense, you know, Bruce Willis is dead. And, and you don't know that up until the end of the movie, okay? You don't want to go see The Sixth Sense knowing beforehand that Bruce Willis is dead. And that's what you're going to tell someone, you know, when you talk about The Sixth Sense. Uh, that's kind of the same deal here. You cannot hear anything about the way the movie ends. Um... Uh, the film is about the early 60s folk scene um, in mostly Greenwich Village, New York. Uh, we also uh, go to Chicago for a little bit. Um, we stay on the road for, for some of the picture, but mostly we are in, um, I would guess, the island of, of Manhattan. Um, I, I think uh, Manhattan is an island, right? Uh, in New York. You know, we're in, in mostly in New York, Greenwich Village. Uh, in that early 60s folk scene that is all but gone, uh, it's 
a perfect period piece. It definitely takes you to that uh, era. Um, I absolutely love the film. I, I don't. Uh, there's nothing that I can criticize. Uh, all of the acting is tremendous. Uh, we have uh, Oscar Isaac, an actor who I'm rather unfamiliar with, but uh, no longer. Um, he's brilliant here. Um, definitely grounds the film. Uh, takes a very difficult character. Um, makes him human. Um, you know, makes you root for him. Uh, you've got John Goodman, um, Carrie Mulligan, uh, Gareth Hedlund. Um, who else? Who else? Uh, some various character actors that you definitely recognize that I, I can't picture, uh, you know, the, the names of, but I knew their faces. Um, uh, it's uh, well direct. I mean, it's the Coen Brothers. It's it's very well directed, well edited, well shot. The cinematography is beautiful. Um, it it takes you back to that uh, time and place that you know very much does not exist anymore. Um, even though it's just from the early '60s, uh, you know, and not only does it look, but it feels that way. You know, it feels like a different time. Um, the only other Coen Brothers movie I really thought of while watching this is uh, is a simple a simple man. Um, you know, their picture from a few years ago uh, that I feel is definitely very personal for them. I I, I kind of got that same. Uh, that this story is deeply personal to them. Um, I think primarily, I think any artist would find it deeply personal because I think the film is about the artistic struggle. Um, the film is about failure, uh, self-destruction. Um, it basically things that, uh, you know, an artist as, as Lewin does faces every day. Um, you know, failure. You know, the movie is about failure. And bitterness, dealing with failure, um, you know, uh, dealing with genius, um, you know, it's just about the artist lifestyle, and I deeply identified with it, as I very much want to be considered an artist, and definitely <sighs> deal with uh, failure, and I'm, you know, I'm not talking about like you know, just your average failure. I mean, like, deep, uh, you know, failure tied into your self-worth. You know, I face that every day, um, as well as bitterness. How, how do you fail constantly? How do you do nothing but fail and yet stay happy, uh, not bitter, and continue on? you know, this path. How, how do you do that? Um, you know, uh, I definitely need to see this film again. It is enigmatic. It is layered. Um, it's very much a Coen Brothers. Uh, Coen Brothers are, without a doubt, um, I, for me, they're my third favorite uh, filmmaker um, team, I suppose. Uh, I think they're the third greatest living filmmakers. I, I, you know, they're ranked three on my list. Uh, you know, you've got Hayao Miyazaki and Martin Scorsese like battling for first place all the time, but the Coen brothers sit comfortably in third place. Uh, and uh, fourth place is way down the road, you know, and I, off the top of my head, I'll say David Lynch. You know, you got those three big ones at the top and then, you know, you go down a bit and you got David Lynch. Um, the Coen brothers have been making movies all of my life. Uh, I, I mean, I believe that, you know, when I watch a Hayao Miyazaki film, when I watch a Martin Scorsese film, I always know that I'm watching, uh, you know, fantastic art that I deeply love. Uh, Coen brothers, they've made movies all of my life. You know, they, they seem to have just been there, uh, you know, some of their, um, Raising Arizona. Raising Arizona is one of the first film experiences I have, uh, you know, in my life. Um, and it's, I remember somewhat watching Raising Arizona in the theater. Uh, really, I honestly only remember, I mean, I, I can't remember the year that Raising Arizona came out, but uh, I would estimate my age between six and eight uh, uh, when Raising Arizona came out. 
Uh, I saw Raising Arizona in the theater. Um, and what I remember from Raising Arizona uh, was uh, the chase scene after uh, uh, High, uh, you know, steals the huggies. You know, I'll be taking your cat. You know, I'll be taking these huggies and whatever cash you got. Uh, so it. Um, uh, crap! Now I lost my train of thought. Um. Um. Crap. Oh, uh, so I remember that chase scene like very vividly, but that's about it from from watching it in the theatrical experience. But I always remember seeing the poster. Um, you know, I, I, you know, as a kid, I, I st stood there looking at the Raising Arizona poster, which is the cast of the film, all on like uh, lounge chairs, lawn lawn lounge chairs with sunglasses, and I was just sort of standing there thinking, how did that baby get those sunglasses, you know? <laughs> I was like, this has to be the height of comedy, a baby wearing sunglasses, it, please take me, I must watch this movie. Um, and the baby, I don't think ever wears sunglasses in the movie. But uh, the Coen brothers, long story short, too late, have uh, been a part of my life, period. Like, from a part of my life, the Coen brothers have been there, uh, always making tremendous work. Um, I think they're kind of the great American filmmakers. Um, you know, they make films that uh, are totally unique. Um, and, I mean, I'm not talking like unique amongst other filmmakers. Like, yeah, there's running themes and, and certain visuals, but I think, you know, every Coen Brothers movie stands on its own as something like totally independent. Uh, and I think that's fantastic. You know, that's very Kubrick-esque of them. Um, I just, I just think they're tremendous filmmakers. They really can't do much wrong. There's, they don't make bad movies. Uh, you know, their career has been long enough to where that can certainly be argued. I, I'm thinking of Intolerable Cruelty. I'm thinking of, uh, The Lady Killers. You know, not top shelf Coens. Uh, this is top shelf Coens. This is their best film since, uh, No Country for Old Men, uh, which I consider their masterpiece. Um... I, uh, and it's so different, you know, it's so different, it's probably the most, I don't know what to call it, maybe like focused script, but when I say focused it doesn't feel right because it's so free and loose, and though it, it may be, you know, like focused on themes, it just feels so breezy and you're just, you know, kind of on this adventure. Um, again. I can't talk about the main point, you know, this ending. Uh, the ending is what you're going to be talking about. Uh, the ending, for me, the film was a nine until the last ten minutes, five minutes, and then it became a ten. And I knew that I was watching one of the best movies of the year uh, and one of the best movies the Coen brothers have ever made. Um, again, I also deeply identified it. I want to make that clear that a lot of, uh, you know, of this review is personal. It, it, it uh it was kind of like a love letter, you know, to to art and and you know the struggle that that uh, every artist faces, um, you know, again with that self doubt and that bitterness and you know I believe it was Nietzsche who said you know when you deal with monsters you have to be careful not to become a monster yourself and that's kind of what living in Hollywood, uh, you know, working in show business does to you. You know, it, uh, there's a lot of hard people and a lot of cruel, uh, well, life is cruel. You know, there's just a lot of people who are natural. You know, they, they don't, uh, they're just wild animals. Show business is full of wild animals. And, you know, in nature, only the strong survives. Uh, so it's, you know, definitely... Uh, an analysis of what that struggle can do um, and how how can you not get locked in in this repetitious uh, you know cycle of self-destruction um, there's really nothing I didn't love about the film uh, I, I don't really know what else I can say I, I it uh, Beautifully acted, uh, gorgeously shot. 
the screenwriting is is next level. You know, um, I was going so hardcore for Nebraska. I really want Nebraska to win best uh, best original screenplay because I thought it was brilliant and hilarious and wistful all at the same time. Um, but now that that the Coen brothers have done this, if anything needs to be honored in this film, and it does, it's the screenplay. The, you know, this story is, it just feels fresh, it feels new, even though it's dealing with something, uh, emotions that are, you know, ancient. Uh, you know, as long as there's been art, you know, as long as there's been uh, grief, you know, uh, disappointment, uh, you know, this story can be told, but now it's finally being told and it feels, you know, alive. You know, the film feels alive. Uh, feels like a living, breathing thing. Um, I just loved it. You know, I, I don't know what else to say. I loved it. It needs to be seen. You need to see it uh, before you enter into any kind of conversation with it because you cannot ruin the first experience. Um... You know, you just can't. Uh, John Goodman has to be mentioned. You know, he works with the Coen brothers. He's probably the Coen brothers' most go-to, relied, relied on, favorite actor. Here, he's just brilliant. Uh, again, he works into the puzzle of the film. The film is an enigma. Uh, you know, the film is a puzzle. Um, all Coen brothers films kind of, all great Coen brothers films kind of end with this. Huh? You know, just like, and then you just me can meditate on it, you know, and you, then you can replay the whole scene, you know, movie in your head and try and, and get the clues and try and, you know, make it come together to coalesce. Uh, it, pun not intended, but the Coen brothers make Coens and Coen brother is C-O-E-N, Coen, I mean, as in... Buddhist meditation, uh, Cohen's K O A N. Uh, the Cohen's make Cohen's, and a Cohen is a well, an example, the oldest example. If a tree falls in the woods, doesn't make a sound. You know, is no one is there to hear that tree make a sound? Doesn't make a sound. Um, you know, it's something for your brain to think about until you realize that thinking is just kind of pointless and you'll turn your brain into this endless cycle that permits you to rise above the flow of time. Um, that's what the Coen brothers do. Coen brothers make 90-minute meditational Coens that you can sit there and think about and turn over in your brain and eventually just forget about life uh, and be able to rise above, you know, suffering. I think that's what the Coen brothers do. I think that's, you know, that's why I consider them the great filmmakers that they are. Um, just practically unparalleled filmmaking. Um, the Wolf of Wall Street has got to be really good for me to, you know, think that Scorsese is, you know, not in danger of, of losing out to these guys. Uh, or Hayao Miyazaki for that matter. Um, it, you know, it's just a great film. It needs to be seen. The music, you know, it is about folk music. Um, the music's really good. Uh, you know, I, I don't know what else to say. The music's beautiful. Um, the crowd was great. Uh, when I saw it, it's now playing on at least three or five screens in Los Angeles. When I saw it, it was only playing on one screen in Los Angeles. Uh, so I'll throw that in there to be a hipster. And I just need, it needed to be seen, and I needed to talk about it before I go on vacation. I wanted to talk about it before I go on vacation. Um, and, you know, I just am overjoyed that it was amazing. Uh, yeah, okay. I mean, I, I, I think I'm pretty much done here. I, you know, it's just all enthusiasm, really, because it's a 10 for me. Uh, everything was brilliant. The film is brilliant, and I don't think there's any aspect of the film that isn't brilliant. Um, so there you go. Uh, that's the uh, new masterwork from the Coen brothers, uh, Inside Lewin Davis, uh, and I give it a solid 10. Definitely one of the best pictures of the year. Thanks much.